welcome to another hour of Gate City Chronicles, the weekly magazine dedicated to the city of Nashua and surrounding areas. I'm your host, Kevin Avard, and I have a very special guest with me today, uh, an artist by trade. Uh, his name is Ken Harvey, and welcome to the show. Thank you. Good All to right. be here. How are you? Wonderful. Thanks. Well, How are you? Well, great. Um, let's get started. Okay. So uh, you're an artist. I like to consider myself an artist. I am a photographer. Mm -hmm. Um, a lot of people think photography is not art, but we can talk about that later. I have some strong feelings about that. Photography is art. Um, and uh, I've been doing it for, let's say, 45 years, on and off, but very seriously now. All right. If you don't mind me backing up, sure. you were in uh, the Vietnam era. You were in the, right. in the military. Yes. And could you tell me a little bit about that and how that transitioned into you discovering photography? and, and the, the, the art behind it? I was fortunate enough to be stationed in Germany. And in Germany, uh, I met some friends who had nice cameras. Uh, cameras were pretty cheap over there. And we had access to the Army Photo Lab. So we could go in, develop our own film, print it, and, and actually, and mount it also. So um, I learned a lot about the back room work, if you will, of photography, being able to work with my own images make them lighter, darker, and what's called dodging and burning, uh, using other effects to make a, a nicer image. Dodging and burning. Uh, you know, it's interesting. I, my dad used to have his own print shop here in Nashua. Uh -huh. And he used to have a little dark room. And okay. uh, he had the, the little trays where you, you put the, the, the film into one thing, and then you put it into another thing. Yep. And then he would look at it, and then he would put it on a plate. And then he would burn it with this really bright, bright, bright light. Oh. And he would make a plate out of it. And uh, I don't know if that's the oh. same thing that you're talking about as far as burning? That's a, a different kind. OK. Um, with, with burning, for example, or, or dot, well, let's take burning. Uh, when you're exposing the paper, you have this enlarger and you're exposing the paper. Um, if you want to burn, let's say, the lower right-hand side of the, of the image, you'll make a big piece of cardboard with a cutout. And you hold that over the image, and you move it like this. So the light is only getting to that section. Oh. So that section will become darker. That's called burning. And the opposite, if, <clears throat> excuse me, if you wanted the, the bottom right to be lighter, you'd hold a piece of paper, cardboard, whatever, over that section, moving it around so you wouldn't have sharp edges. And the light would not be exposing the paper as much, so that section would be lighter. That's, that's dodging. And you, had to do, you definitely have to do that manually. It's all right? manual. Yep. Wow. So, so much easier on a computer now. Yeah, I'm just uh, going back to the, the 60s, and uh, there was that Paul Simon song, uh, I've got a Nikon right. camera. Is right. that what you had? Um, I had a Pentax, as a, a Pentax. matter of fact, but okay. I have a Nikon now. Yeah? Yes, oh. that's true. <laughs> now, now that you're grown up. <laughs> so right? I, can, I can sing the song now. Yeah, that's, that's funny. Now, you, back then, uh, you were using a lot of black, obviously black and white. Mainly black and white. I had uh, two camera bodies. I would keep color, color slide film in one and black and white print film in the other. Um, so when I was taking photos like family get-togethers, you know, nice scenery from a vacation or whatever, I typically use the, the body that had the slide film. And I had interchangeable lenses, so I only needed two bodies, and I would move the lenses back and forth. If I were doing something that was more artistic, I would use the one that was the black and white, um, because then I could do that work in the dark room. Now, speaking of black and white, you have a famous uh, black and white picture of a uh, self-photo of you. <laughs> Sitting in a chair with the, your, the sole of your shoe. Yes, that's right. Uh, and and uh, looking like a working man's shoe from uh, the way I look at it. Can you talk a little bit about that particular photo? Those were my military shoes. Okay. Um, I had worn them out, had them resold, and I, had, I wore them through again. So I had this big hole in the middle of my shoe. Um, and I was due to get out of the military in another, it was Army another two or three months, and I was not going to spend my money on more military shoes that I would never wear again. Right. Um, so anyway, I had this, this concept. I'm going to show how I have these worn out shoes, but I have money in my hand, OK? Um, the problem was that I could only get together $6 for the, <laughs> for the, show, for the, for the image. Um, but I, I set up a, a candlestick. Well, I, I sat on the chair, put my feet up on this table. Um, and I put a candle there where my feet were going to be. I had my camera on a tripod so I could focus on that candle. Because if I'm not there, I didn't I know where to focus. I see what you're doing. Yeah. And then when I was all ready, 
I put the camera on the automatic timer, got rid of the candle, sat down, counted my six dollars, I had my feet up. And um, I was fortunate, it came out to be a, a pretty good um, image. The, the, the composition worked out great. Um, and I used a, a wide angle lens, 28 millimeter wide angle lens, to distort the size of the feet so the feet would look so much bigger. Right. <clears throat> and also give me a, a lot of depth of field where I was focusing on the, on the shoes, that was the important part, but I would not be too out of focus in the background. Well, that's what I thought was interesting about the photo because you, your eyes automatically go to the shoe. You look at that, that in the, the, the hole in the shoe or the, the mm -hmm. becoming hole, mm -hmm. and yet you can still see a clear picture of you in, in the background. And right. I thought, well, that, that's pretty interesting. So that's basically the concept that you wanted to get across. Yes. Now, that's being displayed at the... Nashville Public Library. At the Nashville Public yes. Library. Where, if somebody were to walk in the library, where, where would they look to see that? There's a gallery space downstairs. Okay. And um, I encourage everybody to go there. Um, I'm highly biased, I know, but I think it's a pretty <laughs> good show. Yeah, I'm sure. Okay. Um, <coughs> and there's a, a wide range. I have 26 frame pieces there. Um, and one, the image is five feet wide. Um, and that one can't be put on my website because it's just too big for the website. And it's, it's, uh, it's only eight and a half inches high, but five feet wide. It's a, it's a photo of Woodmont Orchard in Hollis. But I went there every couple of weeks for a year, taking photographs of it, and finally put them all together. So you see the orchard. Every tree is exactly where it's supposed to be. But it goes from winter into spring oh, nice. to summer, autumn, and then with, with no leaves on the trees, and then snow again. There's snow at each end. So you had, you had the exact location marked out? Yes. Interesting. Same I, time of day? or I had, yes, exactly. I had to be there like between 11.30 and 12 each day. So the angle of the sun would be the same. Now, it, the angle does change from winter to summer. Right. But it was always midday. Interesting. So, yeah. so when you look at a piece of art like that, you, people can just step back and say, wait a minute, this took a long time just for this one full-fledged photo. It did. Um, no, it, it, I, it took a year just to get the photos. Right. And actually it took me two years because when the apple blossoms came out in the first one, first year, we were on vacation. Oh. So I to, <laughs> no, honey, I, I got to get back home, man. <laughs> I had to wait another year to get the apple blossoms. Can't do an apple orchard without the blossoms. Right, absolutely. Um, and then the image became so big because it was so many pieces put together that it kept crashing my computer. I had to get a new computer. Oh. So <laughs> there's, a, there's a lot behind that photograph. Uh, now, now they get the iPads that could probably do it all with all the memory on there anyway. It's, it's not a problem anymore. It's no, amazing. No. But I've had people come in, like if I do an art show, I have it set up in a tent. Um, they've come in and they say, oh, is that Woodmont Orchard? Yes, it is. Interesting. Yes. So are you teaching photography as well? No, I don't. I don't, I don't teach it. Um, I'm open to any suggestions. Yeah, but, just... Uh, I, I've, I actually talked to one college about possibly teaching a course there, but that's only in the works. Now, you've been doing this for 41 years? Probably 45. I, I, I started getting serious about photography in the mid to late 60s, 66 through 68, um, when I could do my own work in the darkroom. And then getting into civilian life, not having a darkroom to work with, having to use photo labs, I didn't do quite as much because I didn't have the control over my work. Uh, I, I never lost my interest in photography. But then when digital came out, um, I made the transition back and loved it completely because now I didn't have to have chemicals. Right. I didn't have to have a dark room. I could work on the computer. And most of my life was spent doing computer work. So that was an easy transition to use Photoshop or any other software. Um, and I, I just fell back in love with it. Um, I'm really enjoying it. Now, as far is, is it? Total, it has to be a totally different world with digital. Now you can manipulate without having to do the, the burning. Yes, yes. <coughs> Excuse me. In fact, it's still called burning and dodging. Um, but if you don't like what it is, you can back it off. You can erase it. You can do a, Reset. a lot of things. Yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> yeah. And in, in a dark room, once you get it just right, you have to do it all over again. And I've seen diagrams of work that Ansel Adams did for one of his images. And he would burn this 30% and burn that one 20% and, and maybe dodge this one 20%. It was a lot of work. Um, Ansel Adams said, great photographs are made, not taken. Oh. 
A lot of work goes on in a dark room that people don't realize. Yeah. Um, and one of the very nice things about digital is that once you get it exactly the way you like it, you can make up more, more copies without going through more and more of the same darkroom work. I, uh, I'm, I'm considered the Pavarazzi in, in my household. <laughs> okay. And uh, the Pavarazzi has to take a myriad of, 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 of camera shots to get mm -hmm. one good one. Yep. Uh, I don't think I have the eye, but I think that's the whole secret behind good photography is having the eye. Yes, yes, I agree. Um, when I was a young, much younger man with a much younger brain, um, and I did a lot of photography in the 60s, I could just look and know how something could be composed. Um, I seem to have lost that ability. <laughs> I, I'll, I'll chalk it up to lack of practice, not age. Um, but I still get an idea of what might be a, a good composition. And then, of course, put the camera up to my eye and, and work with it from there. When you're doing your shows, uh, where do you generally start off? You, you have all your artwork set up in a display. Mm -hmm. uh, do you have a particular guide that you go by, or do you like to start off with one particular photo and move to others, or a transition? How, how is a typical show um, orchestrated? Well, a typical show, I have everything up. Okay. Um, for the library, that's great. It's a beautiful venue, uh, nice white walls, good lighting. Uh, but if I do a summer show like the Greeley Art uh, right. in the park, um, I have a 10 by 10 tent with uh, like a mesh wall and hang all the photos on there. So things are kind of jammed in one above the other. Um, it's not as pleasant a display as it would be in, a li in the library. Right. But uh, everything is out and available. Oh, interesting. You have a, a lot of people come to see the show at the, at the, uh, at the library? Yes. Um, I've gotten some very nice um, comments in my guest book. Mm -hmm. And um, the people at the library told me that they have rarely had so many people come into the office to make nice comments about the show. So it is very re rewarding to hear that. So you're not at the library every day, I, no. I take it. So you, no. it, it's, all, it's continually displayed. Yes. And uh, people, if they want to see some of your artwork, where would they first go to with, uh, online? What, what? Uh, they can go to my website, which is it's KenHarveyPhoto.com or KenHarveyPhotography.com. They both work, both go to the same place. Interesting. Uh, we actually did a little research, and you have at least 53,000 hits on that, on that one particular. Uh, yes, I do. Uh, that's pretty good. Uh, it is good. I suspect a lot of those are, are bots, yeah. uh, you know, that's sent out by Google or whatever company that does that, because I average about 50 hits a day. And... I really don't think 50 people a day are looking at it. I don't know how many there are, but um, then I will see spikes. Like if, if I do a show or uh, some other kind of thing, like there's something in the newspaper about me, uh, I will see a, an increase in the number of hits on the website. Yeah. Do you do this for a living? Not really. Um, I'm retired. Okay. I retired six years ago. But you've been doing this for 40, 44 years, 41 years. Were you doing it primarily as a source of income? Or? No, no, I, n I never have. Okay. Um, I probably starved to death. Right. Um, last year, I, I broke even for the first time. Nice. So, <laughs> Moving on. But, up. <laughs> uh, but you know, I, as as a business, I've only been doing it five years, mm. and I I counted up the other day. I must have uh, like forty five framed pieces spread around at different places, and uh, the expense of framing. And I, I use only the quality right. um, materials. Um, I, I ran into a lot of money, so. It's very easy to lose money uh, as you're starting up. Oh, yeah. But uh, now I have a, a good inventory, and I can just uh, turn it over. It's not quite as bad. Is any of your artwork in any museums around the country or uh, any, any particular place that you'd like to say, you know what, that's my work right there? Um, not in museums yet. I'm in contact with a couple of museums that uh, something might happen, but you never know. Mm -hmm. uh, the Courier is looking for some modernist photography right now. And... Um, I guess you could look in Wikipedia or something to find out exactly what modernist is. But it really depends on who the person is that's choosing the work. Mm -hmm. um, I know someone who's a, a very good photographer. She put some, or entered some images and was rejected. Um, only because it depends who's choosing the work. It's very subjective. Yeah, it yeah. is. Did you, uh, do you have a, a number of photos from the Vietnam era at all or in, in, in your portfolio? I do. Um, in fact, the one with the, the, sh the old shoe, it's yeah. called Making Ends Meet. Um, that's from 1968 and when I was in the, the Army. Um, I have a, some racing photographs 
that I took. I was always interested in Formula One racing. So I, oh, I saw to, that with all the dust in the background and, and smoke. Or uh, that's that's actually water. That uh, that was Jackie Stewart driving a 1968 German Grand Prix, pouring rain. Ah. Uh, the conditions were so bad. He won the race by over four minutes, because he was the only one, let's say, crazy enough to go that fast. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and, yeah. Um, so that, that is a water spray coming off the back of the tire. I thought that was smoke. Well, yeah. I looked at it really quickly, so maybe on closer examination I would see that, that that's water. Yeah. Interesting. That, yeah, and what's also interesting is that there's nothing but trees in the background. You know, if you go to a race today, it's all advertising, signs, and everything like that. But we were on a section of the Nürburgring called the Nordschleife, which is the, the back country kind of. And, um, Basically, nothing out there. Mm. So uh, it, it's a very different kind of racing picture. Nowadays, uh, I would imagine some of those photos would be uh, used for documentaries of just uh, for that time period, a snapshot of that time period. Could be. Um, in fact, a friend of mine just hooked me up on Facebook to a group of people that are interested in Formula One photography. Anyway. So I'm there's a niche for I'm everything, right? <laughs> right? There certainly is. Oh. Yeah. So if somebody gets uh, wants to get in, involved with the the world of uh, art uh, with, via photography, mm -hmm. how, how would you recommend that they get started? Read National Geographic. Okay. I know that sounds strange, but the photography in there is first class. Hmm. It's not manipulated. Um, and that's, I learned a lot from National Geographic. And of course, that was in the 60s. You have different photographers now, but um, it's still a high quality magazine. Um, I tended not to enjoy photography magazines. They, they weren't focused, play on words, the way I, I wanted to be. Um, and I would also say study art. Go to museums, look at paintings, and read the descriptions about the paintings. Uh, I've been in, influenced by a number of artists. Um, one that just comes to mind is Vermeer. The way his lighting is in, in his paintings is, is soft light coming through the window and a, a woman is, you know, pouring tea or whatever. Um, that, that really influenced me. That, that light is so important in a photograph. You're not just doing a subject. You're, you're presenting it in a certain way. I was looking at uh, one of the photos where you're, I don't know, you're, look, you're going through this uh, alley and there's this vine going up a wall. Mm -hmm. uh, it's Stone Alley. There. Oh, yes. Uh, the lighting on that particular picture caught my eye because it was bright. It, it, it seemed inviting. Mm -hmm. uh, but it, it was the stone walls mm -hmm. and uh, it looked like something you would see in France or Italy. I don't know if that's where the... Good eye. Is yeah, it? It's France. Is it? Uh, well, I have two that, I could, that could be that. There's one I call Country Lane and has purple flowers. And there's another that there's sort of a tunnel in the distance. Right, uh, and I don't know which one. I think the one with the tunnel in the distance. But what also caught my eye was the, the vine that was growing up okay. the wall. Yes, I thought that was very pretty. Okay, uh, and it looks like you uh, you took a picture of a um, little girl just bending over, smelling a flower, or oh, yes. looking and examining something. Mm -hmm. uh, kind of on the, that that picture of the the, the soft light. Maybe uh, you were prim yes. trying to capture something like exactly. that as well. Exactly, exactly. The way the light, she has the blonde hair hanging down. The lights coming in from behind and lighting her uh, her hair. Lovely. Yeah, she so was a, a flower girl at my uh, nephew's wedding in uh, Laguna Beach, California. Oh, <laughs> so, <laughs> there you go. Well. Yeah. well, you had a picture of a boat, and I, I think the background was, was black and white, and then the, the boat, you had a red stripe on the boat. Yes. What, is the, what was the story behind that? Um, that photo was taken in Svalbard, also known as Spitsbergen. Which, uh, Spitsbergen is the largest island in the group called Svalbard, which are uh, Norwegian islands. They're very far north of the Norwegian mainland. In fact, um, my friend's GPS said 78 degrees north. And uh, by way of comparison, McMurdo Base in Antarctica is only, only 77 degrees south. So we were further north than they are south. Hmm. Our, our weather was better than theirs, though, I have to say that. Um, but it was a red boat. And what caught my eye, um, and it's snow on the, on the mountains, but that was July. You can tell how cold it is there. But the way the, the snow was in these ridges coming down the, the mountain kind of directed my eye to the boat. And that was 
the composition I fell in love with. It looked like it was from quite a distance as well. It was a good distance, yeah. yeah. Uh, I, do you at use, least a quarter mile. Do you use zoom lenses? You must. I at, do. At some point. I yeah. do. Um, it, you give up a little bit with the zoom lens. The, what they call a prime lens tends to be a little, maybe a little sharper, maybe a little bit brighter. Uh, you don't have to use as uh, fast a shutter speed, let's say. Mm -hmm. uh, but the zoom gives you a lot of flexibility. Uh, you don't have to keep changing lenses right. or stepping back and stepping forward. So it used to be <clears throat> when you were doing an action picture, you would uh, probably get like a 1,000 speed film, 500 speed film, 200 speed film, depending mm -hmm. upon the action. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously, I don't know a whole lot about okay. photography. But nowadays, we're not using film. So when you're looking at an action, uh, what, a, what type of material, what equipment do you use to get an action clip? For instance, if I'm, if I'm using my uh, 10 megapixel regular cheap camera that mm -hmm. I just go nuts over, and I, I move a little bit, you can see the blur. Yes. But if, so if you want to capture action, somebody running, uh, you can still use that same camera? Yes. Uh, you can change the ISO, which is basically film speed, if you will. Uh, and yes, we used to use different speed films for different things. Uh, the higher the ISO, um, the more you can stop action with the same shutter speed. Mm -hmm. But a key, uh, and you'll notice it with that a picture of Jackie Stewart racing, is that if you pan with the subject, you blur the background, but the subject stays in focus. Oh, interesting. And that gives you the feeling of speed. I made a mistake very early on, I, I took a picture of some motorcycle racers and I used a thousandth of a second because I wanted to stop that action. The result was it looked like this guy was just there balancing <laughs> on his motorcycle, not really moving. So the, the trick is to don't use such a fast shutter speed, use a slower one, pan with it. Yeah. I um, occasionally, I, actually more than I'd like to admit because I'm kind of boring, <laughs> but I do like to watch uh, the Planet Earth uh, yes. series on TV. Yes. And they, they give you at the end of the show, they, they show you how they went about taking the, the photography, whether it's a group of uh, ladies walking through the desert to find a little hole. And, mm -hmm. and they're up in the cloud with a balloon and, and they, they discuss all their problems or if, if they're going up this, uh, this big tree, they show you how they, they manipulated that. And mm -hmm. it, it, that is really impressive just to watch how they did that. Yes, uh, yes. Uh, I'm sure you could admire it. Doing I can. Yeah. Sometimes you can be lucky and be in the right place at the right time. Right. Other times you have to get up before dawn because you want to get this certain kind of light in the morning or uh, you have to go out of your way, climb a mountain to see right. something, um, which I do a lot, but <laughs> I never seem to be there at dawn or at dusk um, you know, because I start in the morning and in the afternoon. Uh, but sometimes you have to go out of your way to get a particular photograph. Yeah, interesting. Uh, I used to hunt a lot, mm -hmm. and uh, I, I, can, I can remember times where I'd be sitting in the, in the woods, and you could see the light coming through the, the trees, mm -hmm. and uh, I, one time I took my son, and we were just sitting, at, just sitting, and I was tired. We were both mm -hmm. tired, and we fell asleep, and it was a lot darker, and as we woke up, we could see this uh, fisher cat mm -hmm. in front of us. But it was surreal. Just the whole forest changed mm -hmm. color with, with just the lighting. Yes. Do you ever go into the woods and just sit for hours and just look around you and, and say, ah, oh, there it is, boom? Um, I wouldn't say I'd sit for hours, but um, I have done some bird watching, mm -hmm. and I will sit for a long time doing bird watching. Um, and if you, you can walk in the woods and there's nothing around. And you sit down quietly for five minutes, 10 minutes, and Things come to life. Birds come out of everywhere. It's amazing. Um, but, but I know what you mean about the lighting. There's something special. Um, and there's a thing they call the golden hour, which is the first hour of light in the morning and the last hour of light in the evening, where you get the dramatic shadows and the, the lighting is, is different. Um, and on the opposite ends of those is, is the, what they call the blue hour. The, the first hour before the sun comes up and the last hour after the sun goes down. If you take a photograph, it actually comes out bluer than you see with your naked eye. Um, I have a couple of photos, uh, one of Mont Saint-Michel, 
um, in France, that I went out there. I just wanted to take a night shot. And I, I walked out on the causeway, and I, I looked back, and I set up my little composition with the water and all. And um, I thought it was just going to be a black picture with the lights on the, around the abbey. And it turned out very blue. I was surprised. I thought, oh, wow. <laughs> so I took a lot more photos. And there's a name for it. There is. There is the, and I, I didn't know about it at the time. But, uh, yeah. And since then, I, I made a point of going down. Uh, when, the, when the tall ships were in Boston, I went down with a few friends to get there before dawn so that we could get the sun just peeking up, lighting up the, the buildings in, in Boston. We went to um, the Hyatt. It's just across it's where the cell phone parking lot used to be at Logan. And so I would have the, the blue hour, plus I'd get the very orange light showing on the, on the glass on the buildings and with the tall ships that were lit up. So that, that worked out very yeah, well. It's already painting a good picture for me, which is <laughs> yeah. interesting. I have a neighbor, uh, he, he, uh, John Prestige. He, uh, he uh, took some pictures of the birds of uh, Hollis Crossing, and, mm. uh, local here in, in Nashua. And I'm amazed at some of the pictures that he's taken. And mm -hmm. I, years ago, I used to think that, that the bluebirds were extinct. Mm -hmm. But we have them. Yes, we and, do. And, and he, uh, he's, he's captured a number of them, uh, ducks, just uh, swans, even this time of year. He just uh, forwarded mm -hmm. me a couple of pictures of the swans. But that's his passion. And uh, he seems to have a really good eye for it. Good. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm amazed. And he has a, I forget the, the camera he has, but uh, I want one. <laughs> I want one just like that. But he's got an eye for it too, though. There is a knack to wildlife <coughs> photography, and mm. certainly it helps to have a long lens, so a right. very strong telephoto lens, because you can really get up close to the animals. But um, you, you have to know how the animals do things, you know, what time of day are they active, um, right. and, you know, do they hide in certain places or whatever. So you, you kind of know where to look for them. And some people will go out, especially people who do a lot of birding. Uh, they'll imitate the bird call. Oh, yeah. And the bird will answer and go, oh, there he is. <laughs> go yeah. take a picture. That's, that's very interesting. Yeah. Um, uh, I, I play a joke with some of the kids when we go to camp. Uh, I'll, I'll do a duck call and, hey, duck. <laughs> sure enough, they come. <laughs> I have a very dry sense of humor. Okay, good. Um, so, in, in the, getting back to the, the lens, you say things are, are lost when, when you're using a uh, a zoom? The zoom lens. What, what is lost? Well, because they have to work with the optics in a zoom lens, they, they have to make all of these lenses, in, and some will have five, six, seven elements or lenses in them. Mm -hmm. As you're turning this barrel, these, these are moving in relation to each other, and to be able to keep the image sharp, you have to give up a certain amount uh, to handle that whole range that the zoom lens has to work in. Mm. Uh, so that's why you, you tend to give up a little bit of brightness, they say. Um, uh, and I think you give up a little bit in, in, in uh, clarity, too, because you can't make all these lenses move back and forth perfectly all the time. Right. I noticed one of the pictures that we were going through, uh, just uh, the one where it's all yellow. Something looks all yellow. I don't know if it was a desert or if it was a plain. Uh, there was... Uh, Yellow or gold, goldish looking. I don't know if it, One of my photos? Yeah. Yellow seemed to. I, I looked at it really quickly on, online, but. Uh, okay. Um, there's one, it's a, an alley in Saint Tropez, which is. Um, it's, the buildings were painted with red and yellow. It had um, blue, there was a grating on the wall, which, uh, on the window was painted blue. Very strange colors, and um, maybe that's what you... Maybe that's what, the one that caught my eye. I just thought that, that was interesting. What, what's one of your favorite subjects? Is it just is everything's out there that, that just catches your eye? Yes. Yeah. But the only thing I can say is that I don't do flash photography. Okay. Um, Did you I add any don't. time? On occasion, but never, like, seriously. I've never set up a little flash unit so that... You know, I get a picture of this fiddlehead fern growing. Or I've, I've, I haven't done that. I just haven't. Um, and, and people ask me what kind of photography I do, and basically that's what I tell them. Uh, I can't tell you what I do, but I can tell you what I don't do, and that's flash. Interesting. Uh, nothing against flash. Um, I just haven't done it. So does, uh, do you ever get hired out to do a, a particular job? Are you ever chosen to, hey, listen, uh, can, can you come and do this wedding or 
can you come and do uh, this, uh, this skyline uh, where we're looking to, or this piece of property so that we can uh, maybe get a zoning thing on it or anything, uh, anything I, corporately? I, I, I did some work for the National Housing Authority. Um, they wanted some photographs of their buildings to put in their boardroom. And uh, the lady that, that chose me to be the photographer um, contacted, me, contacted me because I had a, a background in architecture. And she said, I thought that you might have a better feel for what we'd like to show in the buildings. And um, she may be right, because I do have a certain love of photography, and I'd like to see buildings shown a certain way. Um, so but I think that's probably the only corporate thing. I, I, I don't want to do weddings. Mm -hmm. um, I couldn't handle that <laughs> stress. <laughs> um, or the bridezillas. Um, bridezillas, that's yeah. funny. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, um, but I, I did one interesting thing recently. A lady came to my tent when I was doing the Greeley show, asked me if I could do photo restoration. She had a, a long photograph, long thin photograph of her father when he was about 17 in a, a graduating class from what looks like a Coast Guard Academy or something. The photo had been rolled up for years and years and years and then was crushed. So now when you open it up, it was all scalloped and right. cracked. And um, I said, yes, I can do that. I was fully confident I could. Um, so I, I took it home. I had it under two boards with some books to flatten it out over time. And slowly and slowly and slowly, it got, got better and better. Uh, finally, got to a point where I could put it on my scanner. I have a flatbed scanner. So I could scan it, digitize it, and then work with it. And um, it came out looking like a brand new photograph. Is, is that a long process? It was. Interesting. It was, but it was sort of a challenge, um, and it, I enjoyed doing it, and um, I was really happy with the results. Would you take calls from people? Uh, hey, listen, I heard you on the other show. Uh, would you? Uh, I got this really great picture of my my grandfather or my uh, uh, an old car that I liked or whatever. The topic could be anything. You would take on that type sure. of work. Yeah. Sure. Sure. Is um, it costly to do that? If if I really charged. Well, it's the worth. proper amount, it would probably be costly. Uh, at this point, I don't charge that much. In fact, as I say, this was sort of a personal challenge to see right. if I could make this really broken photograph look whole again. And um, I was very happy with the result, and the lady that asked me to do, to do that was very happy, too. Yeah, I was just wondering if the Historical Society would ever maybe approach you or something to that effect, where they have documents that, you know, I wonder if you could... Uh, uh, restore some of the, those old pictures. Mm -hmm. um, yes, I probably could. That'd be interesting. Oh, so you don't do weddings, but uh, you would do something like that. That sounds like a, a niche. I suppose it is, and, and I just fell into it. As right. I say, this lady came and asked me if I could do that, and um, I figured that I could, and I was happy to say that it, it worked out well. Oh, interesting. Uh, do you have any shows coming up soon, other than just the library? or? Um, when I finish at the library, I'll be taking my work down to the uh, Worcester Jewish Community Center in Worcester, Mass. Mm -hmm. uh, it'll be there for two months. Uh, and, and that is in February? Or? That'll be March and April. March and April. So I'll, I'll be at the library until the end of February. Okay. March and April, I'll be at the Jewish Community Center in, in Worcester, Mass. And then in May, I'll be at the Red River Theaters in Concord. Oh, nice. Now, they don't have as, as large an area there. Um, I'm not sure how many prints I'll be able to put up there. Where is that, the Red River? I think it's part of the Capital Center for the Arts. I think it's downstairs from it. Oh, yes. But yeah, right across from the Capitol. Yeah. 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 Yeah, okay. I know where that is. Yeah. That, that is a small area. <laughs> yeah. And then for the summer, I do shows, like, like the Greeley Show. I do a show on Meredith, um, et cetera. Oh, interesting. Uh, how many pieces of artwork do you generally display? Is it 20, 30, 40, 50, 100? In the, in the tent? maybe 20. Um, I have 26 frame pieces at the library. I'll have 26 at the JCC or Worcester because there's more room. Um, and I, I also have a browse bin, so unframed pieces uh, where people can page through it to see if there's something they like. Uh, but if I put too many pieces, it looks very cluttered. Right. So I, I try not to do that. Interesting. Do you, uh, do you hope to store stuff in a museum? I say stuff. That's an insult. <laughs> I, I didn't, it's okay. Some of your... your, your, uh, your I, I'd very much like to. I'd very much like to. Um, to me, uh, having my work in a museum 
is um, like a, a sign that I've kind of arrived, if right. you will. Um, and to me, uh, taking a photograph and having people enjoy it um, and having it accepted in a place like a museum is so much better than just selling it. I know that right. it might sound corny. I do enjoy when I sell it, but not for the reason you would think. It's not because I'm making money. It's because someone cares enough about my work right. to actually pay me some money to have it. So that's, that's rewarding. Yeah, it's almost on the idea of somebody mocking you in, in, is, is, is a sign of, uh, well, they took the time to not mock you, but uh, mimic you. What is, what is that? Uh, when, whenever we do a cover song and we're singing somebody else's song, I would right. imagine the, the, uh, uh, the artist is saying, hey, they're singing my song that I wrote. Right, right. Uh, so same way with other people, other mm -hmm. artists, or if you walk into a restaurant and you see some of your artwork on the wall. Yes. Have you done any artwork like that? Or? Well, as a matter of fact, I do uh, have 11 pieces at the Drift Away restaurant in uh, Northampton, New Hampshire, uh, right on Route 1. It's a great restaurant, so I'm happy about that. Um, and I was contacted by the owner. Uh, it's, it's a new restaurant. Mm -hmm. used to be Abercrombie and Fitch, if anybody remembers that. And I'm trying to paint a picture. I love anything to do with the ocean. I love Rye Harbor. Okay. There's a lot of memories there. Yep. Uh, uh, the, the Shoals. I don't know if you've done any artwork uh, at, at, of the Shoals or anything. I, I haven't. Uh, I probably will be going there in, in September. Nice. Uh, I belong to the New Hampshire Society of Photographic Artists and they have a, a field trip out there every September, and I think I'll go this year. Oh, given the right day, that's, that's yes. a beautiful, beautiful yes. place. Uh, yes. My dad used to take us fishing out in a 19-foot boat. <laughs> it was crazy. <laughs> <laughs> but we'd go out there, and just, it was, it's beautiful. It's pristine. It's, yes. it's, it's amazing. Uh, but I, you see all kinds of people out there doing, you know, either up and, uh, doing some artwork. But, mm -hmm. uh, any underwater photography? No underwater photography. Yeah. Um, I took a couple of shots with a friend's camera one time, but you know we were just snorkeling and yeah. whatever. Jacques Cousteau is out of the question. <laughs> yeah, well, to, to do underwater photography, I'd have to get a, a pretty expensive case to put my camera in, either that or get a, a different camera. Right. Um, and I know there are like plastic bags you can put your camera in, but somebody said, are you going to put your camera in a plastic bag really? in yeah. salt water? No, I don't yeah. think so. Yeah, that's a whole different world, a yeah. whole different world. So, uh, any parting thoughts that you'd like to leave with our, 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 uh, our guests uh, uh, as they're watching? Stay tuned. Um, I, my work is diverse, um, and I seem to have things to appeal to a number of different people because they, people have different, have different tastes. Um, and I'm always coming up with new images, which I thoroughly enjoy. Um, I take my camera whenever I travel. In fact, my camera's always in my, the trunk of my car. So that's, yeah, that's not, yeah. that's not, don't break into my car. To yeah, get my, well, nobody knows, yeah, you nobody knows that, right? Okay. Uh, <laughs> but um, my camera's with me all the time because you never know when you're going to see the right thing. And I just don't want to be somewhere where I see a great image and not have my camera. Well, we're in a really big political season right now. Have you done any politicians at all? No, I haven't. <laughs> Good for you. you don't want to break <laughs> no, <laughs> I've, I've seen people do work like that that's better than I can do. And, and I don't want to break into that. I would imagine, I, I love to people watch. Mm -hmm. uh, Tracy and I love to sit at the mall or, or anywhere we go, we'll sit and we watch people. Mm -hmm. They, to me, are the most interesting the, the thing, subject that you can have. Yep. Uh, do you ever sit at, at a mall or, you know, you know, people could probably get the wrong impression, hey, who's that guy with the camera? But my gosh, you could get, your people are so interesting. You can. I, I'm very hesitant to take photos of people uh, because they might not like it. Um, but, oh, there's, there's one that uh, has been well received. <clears throat> it's called Man with a Silver Bowl. Um, I was in Nepal last year uh, on a medical mission. And a man came into our clinic. And um, basically, we had to give him a drink of water for something. It was a silver bowl. And the light was reflecting off the water and off the bowl onto his face. And the background was very dark. And the people in Nepal like you to take their photograph. So there was no problem with that. Um, but that has become one of my favorite images, too. The, the, the one the, from Nepal? Yes, yes. Oh, we'll, we'll, op we'll show that clip as we're... As we're. That, that, was, that was chosen as photo of the year from my camera club, the Photographers, Photographers Forum. Is that one of your... Yeah, as far as awards, uh, you've received 
that there, obviously there's one. Well, um, I have my uh, Portland headlight photograph was chosen as photo of the year in 2008. Um, and that's one, everybody is familiar with Portland headlight, everybody's photographed it. So I had to do something that was different. So I got back farther and I used a wide angle lens and I have a very strong foreground. And the, 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 um, the lighthouse and the, and the building up in the top third, maybe even top quarter of the photograph with some foreboding clouds behind that. And um, I kind of like that one, that image a lot. Yeah. Interesting. Well, we'll so. definitely take a look at that. Okay. Wonderful. Well, I want to appreciate you coming on the show. It's a pleasure. And uh, uh, we want to thank uh, you folks for joining us here. And uh, stay tuned for the up-and-coming events. Uh, and thank you for watching Gate City Chronicle. Until next week.